I'm going to give you some hints for WebAssign 22B. There's some uh, tough problems in here. And uh, so let's take a look at this monkey one. And so we're really going to just show you about free body diagrams. That's really the key to this whole thing. So let's draw the monkey. And so there's a weight going down. And then so that's M sub MG, the mass of the monkey times G. And then the rope is pulling up on him. We'll call that attention. And so what the monkey is doing is he is climbing up the rope as fast as he can. He's not just holding on, and he's pulling down on the rope harder than um, his weight. And so that accelerates him up. And so how much tension does he need to produce in the rope to lift the bananas? And so if you look at the bananas... Mass of the bananas times G would be the weight. And tension up. To lift the bananas, we need a force greater than the weight. How much greater? Well, just a tiny, tiny bit greater. And so the limit would be setting the tension equal to the weight of the bananas. The monkey is accelerating up. And so for part A, sum of the forces equal MA. And you know that the tension has to be the weight of the bananas. The weight is the weight of the monkey, and the mass would also be the mass of the monkey, right? And so that's part A. It usually comes out pretty high. He's got to really scamper up fast. So why is he doing this? Well, he wants to lift the bananas up, so they would lift slowly up, and then he's going to hold on to the rope. The bananas will then fall, bringing the monkey back up. He's just going to hold on to the rope. He's not climbing it anymore. And so that will crack open the crate of bananas, and the monkey can eat them. And so for that, the tension is not equal to the weight of the bananas anymore. We don't know what the tension is. But we do know the monkey is going to be pulled up, and so I would make up positive. And we know that the bananas are going to fall, so I would make down positive. Sum of the forces equal MA for both objects, and you get two equations, two unknowns, the tension and the acceleration. should be able to solve for it, a lot like the problem on the previous web assign where a guy was grabbing a rope and he fell while a bag of sand was going up. Let's look at number two. And so in this one you have two objects and there's a motor driving this cable. And so B is accelerating down and A is accelerating up. And so really it's as simple as drawing a free body diagram of each one. I'll draw A a little bigger. And so keeping the tension straight, that's T2 on mass B, and that would be its weight. And we know he's accelerating down, so you make down positive. All these steps should be able to do by now. Um, and so that would be T1, and that would be the weight of A. And what's the difference between the two? Uh, that one's going up. And so there is a difference between the two tensions. This motor is creating that. And so for part C, make sure you read the instructions uh, at the top of the web assign. It tells you how to, to handle that uh, for getting answer C. It's really the difference in the tensions. And so some of the forces equal MA for each of these guys. They told you the acceleration. should be able to do this one. Uh, this one's a little different. I'm pulling downward on a rope. So maybe this is on the edge of a table, and I'm pulling downward on a rope, pulling this guy forward. And so a free body diagram is going to be the key to solving it. And so there's weight, mg. It's only one object in this one. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier. There's a normal force. And then there's this force that's at an angle theta. And they tell us what the force is. And then we have friction, in this case kinetic friction, backwards. And we're in the, I'm going to make that the negative x. And so coordinate system, all the stuff I'm doing here, you should be able to do. And so if you sum the forces in the y direction, you can solve for the normal force. Because remember, friction is mu times the normal force. But the normal force doesn't equal the weight here. I've got some of this force downward in the negative y, some of it in the positive x. And so some of the forces in the y equals 0, some of the forces in the x equals ma, and you should be able to solve uh, for this one. Look at number four. Uh, so this one, 
we uh, first solve for the case where nothing is moving here. And so what is the weight of C so that nothing moves? And so in this case, we know the tension in the string equals the weight of B. Because if you look at a free body diagram, if B is not going to accelerate, these two have to be equal and opposite. And so now you can draw a free body diagram of A plus C, because we don't want C to slip or anything. So as far as you're concerned, they're, they're glued together. And so the same tension is over here, and that would be the weight of B. And we have our normal force, and weight of A plus weight of C, and friction static friction back here, right? But if we want the minimum weight to put on to keep things from moving, static friction is less than or equal to mu static times the normal, but right with the minimum weight, that means we're asking friction to do all it can, it equals mu times the normal. So some of the forces in the Y tell you the normal force, some of the forces in the X would uh, allow you to solve for um, the unknown weight C. You can solve just for the total weight, then when you're all done, subtract the weight from A. That's kind of a, a, a good trick to do. And also make sure you notice they're giving you the weights, and so you have to solve for the mass uh, yourself. You have to get the mass of B, and then in the next part, the mass of A. And so now you're going to remove C, and so now without this weight, we know A is going to slide, and so now this is kinetic friction over here. And so otherwise, the free body diagram is the same, and there's no more weight from C. And what's going to happen here, B is going to go down, but the tension is no longer equal to the weight of B. Otherwise, it wouldn't go anywhere, right? And so you have to sum of the forces equal MA over here, and some of the forces in the, well, I didn't do my coordinate system, but I'm sure you saw that and some of the forces in the y and the x here, and you'll be able to solve this one. Just a little tricky on the algebra, not too bad. Uh, this one's kind of cool. So this block is going to slide down this ramp, and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to hold on to the string, or this rope, to keep it from sliding down. Does friction help us? Yeah, it'd slide down easier if there wasn't friction. And so that means at the beginning, for part A, we have this unknown force, and we have the force of static friction up the ramp. And then we have the weight, and we have the normal force, and eventually this one is going to go up the ramp. Oh, you're tardy. Um, no, you still have five minutes to get to class. And so some of the forces in the, and remember here would be theta, right? the 20 degree angle. And so some of the forces in the Y equals zero, and so that will solve for the normal force. Some of the forces in the X equals zero, and you should be able to get the static friction force again. You're asking stat, uh, static friction to do all it can, and so it's equal to the mu static times the normal force. Well, now we want to, instead of just keeping it from sliding down the ramp, we want to start it moving up the ramp. So I'm going to start pulling harder and harder. What's going to happen to friction? It's going to go from up the ramp to just before it slides, it's going to be hurting us. It's going to be now down the ramp. And so the force of static friction for part B switches direction. And so try it, and you can picture this. Uh, just think about pulling up, now friction switch direction. And so again, some of the forces in the Y equals zero, some of the forces in the x equals zero, what is this unknown force? And finally for part c it starts to move and so the only thing that changes is now this is kinetic friction which equals mu kinetic times the normal force and so this free body diagram gets a lot of use here as long as you switch the direction of friction or maybe do it twice. Let's look at six. This one's kind of tricky uh, the key is to draw a free body diagram of the knots. And so I have a tension here, and I have a tension here, 
and there's also a tension here. But they're not all the same. One of them I know. If a, Remember, the, there's no acceleration here, nothing's moving, and so I know the tension in this string is the weight of A. You can draw a free body diagram of A and figure that out, but I'm just going to say it equals that. These two are not the same, so I have to be careful, and so I'm going to call this one T horizontal, and I'm just going to call that one T. You can make up something else if you want. And so this is our 30 degree angle, theta, and coordinate system. And so if you sum the forces in the y direction, you'll be able to see this T shows up in the y direction. You can figure out what that tension is. Then when you sum the forces in the x direction, you can get what this tension is. And then you can do, draw a free body diagram of the block B to figure out what's going on with friction. And so B would have the weight. I think they give the weight in this one, I forget. And that would be T horizontal. And that's the normal force. And this would be the force of static friction. Uh, and again, it's just about to slip. We want to know um, when it's just about to go. And so it's force of static friction less than or equal to mu times the normal. But just before it goes, we have that. And so summing the forces in the x and the y um, for each of these free body diagrams will solve the problem. It's a lot of work. Give yourself a lot of space, but you can do it. Seven, we want to get the uh, acceleration and the tension in this system. We looked at one very similar to this without friction. And so the key is to just draw a free body diagram of both objects. M1's kind of tough because it's an incline. Those are tough, especially on a graphics tablet. So excuse my lack of precision here. And weight is straight down. That would be M1G. And this tension is parallel to the ramp. And there's no friction on the incline. And we know that it's got to go down if it's released from rest. So I'll make down and parallel to the ramp positive. And then this would be theta here. So sum of the forces in the y equals 0. Sum of the forces in the x equals m1a. Then if you look at m2, we have weight and a normal force and the same tension is over here, and we have kinetic friction, which equals mu times the normal force. And so some of the forces in, well, let's get a coordinate system. And so I make plus x to the right, because that's the direction it's going to go. And so some of the forces in the y equals 0. That'll give you the normal force. Some of the forces in the x equals ma. You'll get an equation with tension and acceleration. And some of the forces in the x here, you'll get tension and acceleration. Should be able to solve for it. It gets kind of tricky toward the end. Uh, if you can do one like this, uh, you're going to do great on the test. Or even if you can do this with only making a few mistakes. One more. And so number eight, we want to find out um, what's the biggest acceleration I can give these blocks and not have the four kilogram one slide. And so at first you look, they're told that if you pull on the four kilogram one with some force, I'm going to call it F slide, it starts to slide. What you want to do is figure out what acceleration that would give this block, the four kilogram one. Uh, then I know I can give the both blocks that same acceleration and so what force would give both blocks that acceleration? If I try and accelerate it more than that, then friction isn't large enough and the four kilogram block would slip. And so you find the max acceleration by just looking at the four kilogram block and then set the acceleration of both blocks equal to that. Uh, and there's no friction between the five kilogram and the floor. So that one's kind of tough. And these are just meant as hints. If you still need help, use Ask Your Teacher or come in before school, tutorial, and you'll have a little time during class. Good luck.